Hello, my dear children. Welcome to the second class of history. And the topic is the Egyptian civilization. As I've sent you the chapter in the WhatsApp group, kindly read it once before I explain you the chapter. Now, let's begin our class with the location and origin of the Egyptian civilization. Like the Mesopotamian civilization, River played a very important source for the growth of this civilization too. Here, the river Nile was a constant and major influence on its development. Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian, called Egypt as the gift of the Nile, as it would overflow its bank every year without fail. So this river Nile provided water for irrigation, that is, watering of land. It also served as the main transportation channel, which enabled the Egyptian to develop trade relations with other countries. The valley of Nile was a narrow strip of fertile land stretching along the banks, and the rest of the country was a desert of sand and stone, which served as natural barriers to foreign invasions. The ancient Egyptians strongly believed was life after death. They even believed that a dead person lived in his tomb, which is their eternal home. And this belief inspired them to build giant pyramids, temples, monuments. Egypt was divided into two parts, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt. It was around 3200 BCE. These were united and ruled by pharaohs, that is, rulers, and became a brilliant civilization until the death of Cleopatra. She is the last pharaoh in 30 BCE. Now, let's look into the characteristics first. Let's check the town planning. Here the cities were planned based on the nearness of water source. Cities were divided into upper and lower regions. There were two types of buildings, dwelling and public building. Dwelling houses were built around the crossing of two major roads. It was made up of sun-baked bricks and the houses had flat roofs. Mostly people lived in two or three rooms without bathrooms, while the rich lived in three-storied houses, which was made of stone. It had more than 30 rooms with bathrooms, kitchen and courtyard, whereas the royal palaces were enclosed by high walls. Talking about the public buildings, here the temple districts were better planned. Now, let's check the architecture and engineering of the Egyptian civilization. The Great Pyramid at Giza is one of the seven wonders of the ancient wonders. Another wonder is the Sphinx, a mythological figure with the body of a lion and the head of a human. Society was divided into three classes, the upper class, the middle class and the lower class. The upper class consisted of the royal family rich landowners, high-ranking priests, government officials, and doctors. The middle class consisted of merchants, manufacturers, craftspeople, and the lower clergy. The lower class consisted of peasants, which are farmers. When we talk about the family life, Quite similar to the Mesopotamian, the father was the head of the family, 
women's rights were protected and children enjoyed carefree and happy lives. Bread and beer formed the staple diet of the people. Their dresses were made of white linen. Both men and women wore jewellery, cosmetics and wigs. Agriculture was the chief occupation as the soil was fertile because of the abundant supply of water from the Nile, which enabled them to grow crop throughout the year. They domesticated animals such as cows, sheep, goats, etc. There were skilled craftspeople such as potters, goldsmiths, carpenters, weavers, sculptors and painters. The advanced technology or technique used in mummification showed that the Egyptian had a deep knowledge of the human and its system. Mummification is the preservation of dead bodies. The preserved dead bodies are called mummies. It was carried out on both by land and sea routes. The barter system was used and the medium of exchange was grain, silver and copper. They developed a form of writing called hieroglyphic writing or script which was considered as sacred writing. They worshipped many gods and goddesses connected with nature. They worshipped pharaohs as gods as they believed in life after death. So, they preserved the body of the dead. Foreign invasion and internal revolts was one of the reasons of the decline of the Egyptian civilization. Now, my dear children, as we have come to the end of the chapter, I want you to do some work. But before you do it, I would advise you to read the chapter once again. Kindly do exercise A, B, C, D, E. And from exercise F, question number 1, 3, 7 and 8. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe.